So I think it's easiest to understand the difference between quantized and continuous um, by uh, looking at these uh, examples here. So the amount of sleep that you would get in the night is continuous because it could take on pretty much any value over a continuum. But say the number of children a family has is quantized. Not because the number of children has to be an integer, but because it, there's gaps between the possible values that can't get filled in. Okay. Now, um, it would generally seem that many things in classical physics seem to be continuous. For example, you might ask, say, um, how much energy does the chalk holder have? Well, I could give it a small amount of energy or a big amount of energy. And it seems like I can vary how fast I'm shaking my hand uh, in any particular way. So it can be, um, so that it can be, the energy seems like it could be continuous. Um, and uh, by the same token, if I say I want to make my chalk holder orbit around my hand, it seems like it could orbit at any radius. Okay. However, it turns out that at the atomic level, many things that you might have thought would be continuous are actually quantized. For example, uh, you might be familiar with the idea that we can uh, kind of think of the, um, the atom and the nucleus and the electrons like a little solar system, and the electrons are like the planets that are going around the nucleus. Uh, but it turns out that uh, that analogy is not that great. For one thing, um, the electrons can only circle at certain radii. Another radii can't exist. Whereas in a real solar system, a planet could be at any distance, just like the chalk holder could be at any distance from my hand. So the radii are quantized. And also the energies are quantized for pretty much the same reason. Um, the electrons can only have certain energies. Whereas it seems in ordinary life, things can have any amount of energy when they're orbiting. All right, so many things that seem continuous um, uh, to, are continuous are really at the atomic level, the quantization is important. So we're gonna have to see uh, the examples of both of those. Um, why is it that we don't notice in ordinary life how things are quantized? Well, let's say we have a variable, um, and let's say I'm going to make a dash for all the values that the variable can take in. So let's say that the variable could take on these values. Well, if the variable can take on these values, um, it, can't take, it can't go into the gaps, so it's clearly quantized. And people would definitely notice that it's quantized because they could see it can't be in the gaps. But on the other hand, suppose that the uh, variable can take on all of these values. Well, it's still quantized because there's still gaps, but now the possible values are so close to each other that you might not notice the gaps. So many things that seem continuous are really quantized. It's just that the gaps are so small that you don't realize they're there. Um, so what we could say here is that you don't realize this is quantized because the quanta are so small. The quanta are the individual gaps here. Well, if the gaps are very, very small, um, then um, uh, you don't realize that something is quantized. It seems like it's continuous. And it turns out that a lot of the quanta in physics are so small that uh, until 1900, people didn't even realize that things were quantized. They seemed continuous. Okay, so let's go into some specific cases. So the uh, photoelectric effect is a very important idea. It's pretty likely to be on the exam, so let's make sure we understand that. <laughs> 